Hello my lovely people, it's Queen Agnes. Welcome to Queen TV where I encourage everyone to be earnest and brilliant and over empowered. As you can tell by the title, I'm doing a chapter reading on Psalms 23. And so this is a new little like segment or section or video um, thing that I'm doing for my channel now. And so I'm going to be doing it probably like once a month picking a chapter in the bible and then just really debriefing it and going over it and kind of doing like a bible study with that chapter and so the reason why i picked psalms 23 as my first one is because i feel like psalms 23 is really common in like it's just one of those verses that are really popular and really common in christian beliefs or even non-christians they go off of this chapter just like um i can do all things through christ who strengthened me or for god so love the just different verses like that so i feel like this is a really good um chapter to do and as you can see on my bible um oh you can't see but i've studied this chapter i actually studied this chapter it was one of my first chapters to study when I was going on my new Christian walk with God. So it just, it feels appropriate to start off with this chapter. So let's dive in because this chapter is full of so many powerful words and so many beautiful promises that I just have to share this. And I cannot keep this verse to myself because you have to get on the T. Like you, you have to get part of this because this is it this is life my bible is really big like the text is big because yes it needs to be big i don't like the small text and it's the king james version so psalms 23 the lord is my shepherd i shall not want already it already started off powerful the lord is my shepherd i shall not want if the Lord is your shep our shepherd, we shall not want because he provides what we need. Just like a sheep leans on, depends on the shepherd to provide for it. That's what God is to us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters so not only does god provide he gives us rest and we all know how important rest is for our bodies sometimes we just need to slow down rest our mind and we can feel completely better so one he provides two he gives us rest. They're just two verses in and I'm already feeling blessed. Verse 3. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. So not only does he provide, not only does he give us rest and peace, he guides. He guides us in the path of righteousness he guides us like I cannot emphasize this enough we're not alone you're not alone there's that army remember from my last reflection there's that army behind us so we're never alone he's guiding us he's guiding us and here he's making it clear that he does he guides us Verse 4. Ye though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, thy comfort me. So now we're kind of like transitioning into like a little personal level with God. So first, the first three verses we discover what does God do? He provides, he gives us peace, he gives us rest, and he guides us. Now we're saying, 
this is the kind of level that we need to go to, to where we can say that even when I walk through the valley of death, even though I am faced with evil, I will feel no evil because I know you are with me. Your rod and your staff, it comforts me. I don't know how many of you guys know Moses, but Moses carried Ron a, a staff and that staff would comfort him. And so I think that's what David is referring to, that rod and staff comforts us because when Moses was feeling hopeless or like he didn't know what he was doing, he would always, I mean, he would turn to God. He wouldn't turn to the rock and worship it, but God would show his blessing through that. And so that rod, it just shows our faith our faith and so this is really personal and i feel like it should be um it should be everybody's hope and desire to reach a point to where you can say that you can say god is my rock and he's my comfort like i will literally feel no i will not fear any evil because i know he is with me and i feel like it's not something, like, it seems, like, when people say it, it seems so easy. Like, you could do it so easily, but it really isn't. Like, it is really, really hard. It's hard. It took me 18 years. 18 years to, like, like, not even 100% yet. Like, let's say 90, 95% truly know, okay, God is my comfort. Because there are days when... I just, I don't know why I don't turn to God first. Because eventually, I've gotten better at turning to God. But I'm like, why didn't I go to God first? Like, am I doubting that he's my comfort? Am I am I doubt, doubting him? Like, it's hard. It's not something easy. And that's why I say it's very, very personal. And it's very hard to reach the point. So let's continue. Verses 5, it says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. So sorry, my brothers were so loud in the background. So I'm going to reread it because this is very powerful. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In the presence of my enemies. So just looking back to Moses... When Moses was faced with his enemies behind him, God put a table in front of him, in front of his enemies. And to me, what a table means is just a clear instruction or a clear plan, a clear blockage from your enemies. A, a table to prepare you to fight your enemies that distance between your enemies because when i think of a table is something where i prepare my stuff where i get myself organized so that's when i think of when i think of that prepared a table before before me in the presence of my enemies that's what i think of and then the second part of that verse says that anointed my head with oil my cup runneth over so if you didn't know or you know in the olden days when someone would become like a king or a priest like some someone very high they would anoint them and basically anoint is kind of like a fancy word for bless them and um like they just set apart and like they're called and um how they would do it they'll run a cup of oil over their head and they'll get anointed and so king david when he was about to become king they did that to him and anointed him so so bless basically it's just he blessed him god blesses us and not only does he just anoint us with oil the cup runneth over because his blessings are beyond what we could think of like Literally, okay, sometimes <clears throat> I just sit and I really think about 
the thing God God has done for my life. And I just think back to situations and times and just different things like that. And I'm like, wow, like I really start to see that God's hand in everything. Like before I would think, oh, I'm the one who did it. But like when I really sit back and think of that, I'm like, I was not even able to do this. Like I wasn't, I, me, I would not be willing to do that. But God is. So when I see that, I, I, I see his blessings overflow. Even when we don't need, even when we don't deserve his blessings, he still continues to bless. So I want to challenge you guys to, for seven days or however long, to get a, a journal or notebook or even a piece of paper. And every single day when you wake up or at night, I like doing it at night. Some people like doing it in the morning, but I like doing it at night because you went through that full day. And just write down three things that you're grateful for or three things that God has blessed you either that day yeah, it should be that day if you do it at night and then if you do it in the morning, just three things that God is blessing with. Like, the, honestly, even if your day hasn't started, you can think of so much. Excuse me. That God has... So, sorry, I got a comment. I'm not quite sure where I stopped. I think I was talking about blessings. So, God's blessings just are plenty. Oh, yeah. I challenged you guys to um, list at least three things that you guys are grateful for that God is continuously doing in your life and i promise you once you start seeing that it's going to really help and i when i first started um this journey getting closer to god that's one of the things i would do i would actually write it down but now i'm just at that level where i just think about it and i could just it's just so much and like i don't even have to write it down so let's continue on to our last verse so our last verse says Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. This verse, so this is the last verse of Psalms 23, so it's not that long, and it's very powerful. So, God's loving kindness and mercy. Once you see his blessing, they're, they literally won't run out. Like, they're going to continuously be in our lives forever. Forever. Excuse me. I don't know why my brother's always so loud when I'm recording, but... Yes, so God's mercy and loving kindness is always with us from the day we're born to the day we die. And that's that's a good promise like and the way he puts it like his goodness and greatness shall follow me it follows us even when we're abandoning it it follows you like okay you know like those creepy people and weird people like you literally tell them can you please back off and they keep following you like that's literally how god is like you're like i don't need you like leave like why are you here and he's like no like i'm gonna keep going i'm gonna keep coming so that's literally how god is and it's a great reminder that not only does he keep blessing you and blessing you and blessing you when we don't even deserve it but he continuously follows us with his goodness and mercy and so that's just uh that's just amazing to think of and then when he says, I will do in the house of the Lord forever, it's talking about heaven. Because of God's grace, because of God's mercy, we're going to be able to go to heaven. So I hope you guys enjoyed this chapter reading as much as I did. I really love Psalms 23 so much. I love Psalms a lot. It has a lot of great promises and reminders because David, who I think I'm going to do like a not a not a character reading but like a character review i guess and exp um talk about some of the bible characters because david is a really interesting guy and he just fell a lot but he was named a man after god's own heart and so literally like when he writes this stuff you can relay with him because he was human like he's just like you and i he made the same mistakes we make like or even worse but he was still considered a man of God. 
so i'm not gonna get too much into that probably i'm gonna actually do like a character review or something so anyways that is it my lovely people thank you for tuning in on another episode of try again this time with god make sure you like comment subscribe and god bless you bye